Now that you have had time to plot your data, let's see what it should look like. You should have obtained a graph that looks like this. Now what is the explanation for this? Let's look again at our data for 120 MeV per C. What do we expect to happen to the peaks when we increase the momentum? If the formula P equals M times V is true, then as we increase the momentum P, from 120 to 140 MeV per C, we would expect the velocity V of each type of particle to increase as well, and therefore the time T of each type of particle to decrease. Let's look at the position of the three peaks at 140 MeV per C. Now at 140 MeV per C, the pions are T equals 21.1 nanoseconds, which is certainly smaller than it was for 120 MeV per C the pion flight time has decreased by 2 nanoseconds. In other words, the pion velocity has increased. The muons are now at t equals 18.5 nanoseconds, which is a 1.3 nanosecond decrease in flight time. So the muon velocity has increased as well. But the electrons are still at t equals 14.7 nanoseconds, the same as for 120 MeV per c. So even though we increase the momentum of the particles, the electron velocity did not increase measurably. This demonstrates that the formula P equals M times V from classical mechanics cannot be correct. Now what is the explanation for this? The theory of special relativity says that the momentum equals the mass times the velocity, and that is only an approximation that is accurate for particles moving much more slowly than the speed of light. The true equation according to special relativity is P equals gamma times m times v. For slow particles, gamma is very close to 1, so we can't really tell the difference between classical physics and relativity for slow particles. But the particles that we are producing are going at a good fraction of the speed of light, so we might expect that we would be seeing deviations from the predictions of classical physics, and we have seen it already for the electrons. Classically, p equals m times v. Here m is the mass of the particle, which in our case is a constant. If we make a graph of P versus V, as we change to different values of P, we should get a straight line with a slope equal to the mass M. If special relativity were true, then P equals gamma times M times V, where gamma equals 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. And since gamma is a number that starts at 1, and gets larger and larger as v approaches c, the plot of p versus v should exhibit an increasing slope as v increases and gets closer and closer to c. It is obvious that the data points are in good agreement with the prediction of special relativity and not with that of classical physics. The factor of gamma becomes infinitely large as the particle approaches the speed of light c. This imposes a universal speed limit of c on all particles. Since the mass, and therefore inertia, of a particle effectively increases as the particle speeds up, it becomes harder and harder to accelerate the particle any faster. That's why nothing with any mass can reach the speed of light c. In the case of the electrons, the electrons are so small in mass that even at p equals 70 MeV over c, they are already going at practically the speed of light. They have very little room to speed up anymore, and so their flight time increases only negligibly, even when the momentum increases. The increased momentum does not increase the speed of the electrons proportionally, but rather, it effectively increases the mass of the electrons. If we could go to even higher momentum, say 1000 MeV over C, both the muon and the pion peaks would lie almost on top of the electron peak because those particles would also be going at very nearly the speed of light. In our experiment today, we used the Triumph cyclotron to produce particles going near the speed of light. We showed that these particles obey the equations of special relativity and not the equations of classical physics. Even though the objects that we encounter in everyday life are not traveling near the speed of light, special relativity still impacts our life in subtle but important ways. 
For example, the global positioning system that is used for navigation needs to take relativity into account in order to work properly. The productions of isotopes for nuclear medicine and radiation for cancer therapy depend on machines that make particles go near the speed of light. Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared is an application of special relativity that makes nuclear power possible here on Earth and enables us to understand the processes that power the cosmos. So special relativity is important. For a detailed discussion of several interesting topics related to this experiment, we invite you to look at the supplementary material included with this program. So that's the end of our demonstration, and we hope you've enjoyed this short example of special relativity.